Hi, this is Mohamed Omer and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation. And this is case 103 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of a complex percutaneous coronary intervention that was completed using only 5 ml of contrast. The patient was an elderly man who presented with a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He had a chronic kidney disease but normal left ventricular systolic function. He did have a baseline right bundle branch block on the EKG with significant dynamic ST segment changes when he was having chest discomfort. Diagnostic angiography demonstrated a distal left main lesion along with significant lesion in the middle AD as well as an ostia lesion in the right coronary artery. This was clearly a challenging situation given the patient's age and chronic kidney disease. His GFR was 35. And after discussion with um, the patient, the family, as well as the cardiac surgery department, it was decided to proceed with PCI of the LAD and the left main. We did not aim for complete revascularization here given the patient's age as well as chronic kidney disease. Every measure was undertaken to minimize the risk of contrast-induced acute kidney injury. He was hydrated before and after the procedure. He was on a statin and sets were discontinued. And we used several ways to minimize the amount of contrast given. And we did use uh, uh, ISO or smaller contrast agent. The patient did remain hemodynamically stable throughout the procedure. Probably the most important measure we used to minimize use of contrast it was extensive use of intravascular ultrasound. Femoral access was obtained. The left main was engaged with an EBU guide catheter. Engagement was confirmed with cell in inst injection instead of contrast that caused some EKG changes. And then both uh, the LAD as well as the circumflex as well as a large obtuse marginal branch were successfully wired using workhorse guide wires. This was accomplished using as a roadmap the images that had been obtained during the diagnostic angiogram. We then performed intravascular ultrasound of the LAD that demonstrated a significant lesion in the mid portion of the vessel. There was also some calcification and severe lesion at the distal left main. The LAD was stented with a 3.0 by 28 mm stent based on the IVUS measurements and was post dilated with a non compliant balloon with good expansion. Moving on to the left main, this was a bifurcation with involvement of the distal left main. And uh, the two key techniques for these bifurcations is the DK crash if two stents are needed or the provisional strategy. In our case, we're concerned about potentially losing the side branch given the location of the lesion, so we decided to proceed with a double kissing crash technique, which can be a challenging technique. However, it was accomplished in this case using minimal amount of contrast. These are the 17 steps, and I will go over them one by one. First of all, we ensured that we predilated the lesions both into the circumflex as well as in the LAD. We can see that the balloon is expanding nicely. And then we did insert a balloon into the main vessel. We delivered a side branch stand into the circumflex and it was deployed. Now there was an early obtuse marginal that was of significant size. That is why this was protected using another guide wire. Then after the stand was deployed in the side branch, we pulled back uh, the balloon, did the high pressure post dilatation. And then uh, we did not want to perform an injection to check the result into the circumflex, but instead we did use intravascular ultrasound. And by doing that, we were able to see that there was preserved flow into the obtuse marginal branch, as well as assess the result into the circumflex. Result was overall good as we're coming back into the left main. And here is the stand protruding a little bit into the left main. So overall, uh, a nice result into the circumflex. The stand was post dilated to achieve a better expansion up to 28 atmospheres and then the circumflex stand was crushed with uh, the LAD balloon. 
we rewired the circumflex through the crust stand. We did use a workhorse guide wire and um, although there was some difficulty, we were able to advance the guide wire into the circumflex. We debated about wiring also the obtuse marginal branch, but we decided to not do so for reasons of simplicity, especially since we had seen flow through it using um, ultrasound and the chroma flow. We then delivered balloons into the LED as well as the circumflex and performed the first kissing balloon inflation. Two-step kiss, high pressure into the circumflex, the side branch, and then together at lower pressure, um, 14 atmospheres in this case. We then remove the side branch balloon and deliver a stand from the left main into the LED, 3.5 by 20. We did IVUS as we did with the circumflex and the stand appeared to be uh, well expanded. We then perform the proximal optimization technique with a 4.0 millimeter balloon in the left main. And after doing that, uh, then we rewired into the circumflex, once again using a workhorse guide wire that successfully crossed. And then performed the second kissing balloon inflation, performed a final pot, proximal optimization technique. And then we perform intravascular ultrasound that showed a nice result. We could have stopped without doing any contrast injections, however, um, we want to make sure, given the calcification, that there was no issue with perforation, and therefore we did perform one injection uh, with 5 ml of contrast. That was very reassuring, it demonstrated good flow in both the LAD and the circumflex. Importantly, there was also good flow into the obtuse marginal branch. I am personally a little skeptical of performing zero contrast PCI, I think performing one or two injections to ensure the safety of the procedure is um, having very little risk of causing acute kidney injury even in patients with advanced chronic kidney disease and provides some layer of safety against complications. Thank you very much.